Hey everyone, thanks for checking out the video. This video is going to be a follow-up to my drum mixing tutorial. And on this mix, I'm mixing drums again, but this time it's a three mic setup. So on these particular drums, I have just a kick, an overhead top, and an overhead side. So I'll hit play here and let you hear it. This is an instrumental track I put together for music licensing. It's kind of an upbeat acoustic pop kind of thing. Okay, here's our drums, completely unaffected, nothing's going on, not even panned, no levels, nothing. The drums were recorded on a Gretsch kit um, with a D6 on the kick, on the resonant head, and then a pair of Cascade Vingettes in Glenn John's arrangement. So that's one overhead directly over the snare drum pointed down, and then another overhead off to the right of the floor tom pointed at the snare. And I made sure to measure between those two mics so they were equidistant so the snare is in phase. It gets you a really cool vintagey sound. Um, I think it was used on a lot of Led Zeppelin records. So here's the top mic. And then here's the side mic. You can hear on the side mic, since it's right over that floor tom, you get a nice attack from the floor tom. So I'll start off by panning these two a little bit to give us some width. With this type of technique, you don't want to hard pan it since you're relying so much on that snare being in the center you don't have a snare mic to keep panned in the center so you need to get some of that down the middle snare sound from your overheads i'll add the kick in so the trick with drum recordings with few mics it's a lot less about isolating each mic and a lot more about making the drums sound huge with limited sources. To start, I'm gonna add a virtual mix rack on the kick here. I'm gonna add in the trimmer, just to start off with this phase reverse. And I'm gonna make sure the kick is in phase with the overheads. So if you hear it when the phase is at zero and then flipped to 180, it actually adds more low end on the 180. So that's actually in better phase right there. So I'll leave that there. Since I'm the one that recorded these, I know the overheads are in phase. I checked it going in, um, but we can double check it here with the trimmer as well. Here, how all the low end drops out. We kind of lose some of the snare. much more of what we want. It's important to check your phase right when you start because otherwise you might be hurting yourself down the road because you're already missing low end because your drums aren't in phase. So you're going to end up EQing that back in, but it was there to begin with. You just, the mics, on, the phase on the mics was the wrong way. So I will start with this overhead top. Since this is right over the snare, this is probably the closest thing to a full picture of the drums that we have. Okay, I will start with FG Dynamics, ratio around three. We want a slow attack, fast release. I start pulling that threshold down. There we go. I'm going to add in the Slate SSL EQ here. So we need to be careful on the high pass here because if we go too high, we're going to immediately lose the snare and we're relying on these two mics to give us all the toms too.
just taking out barely a little bit of sub frequencies from the kick. We also don't want to be too aggressive on our cuts here because we're affecting the whole picture of the drums, not just one specific drum. That's way too aggressive. Somewhere in there is nice. Still get some thunk from the snare as we cleaned up some of the mud. I like this detail right here at uh, 2.1K. There's some of the drum clicks in there, some hi-hat detail, some grit from the snare. That's all living right there. Even some cymbals. Now I'm going to boost probably around 8K here. Since these were recorded on ribbons, there's already quite a roll off on the top, so I'm going to try to add some of that back in. The benefit of recording with ribbons in this style is that you can boost the top end and it won't get as harsh. I thought about boosting the low end of the snare here, but we're already getting a good amount, so I'm going to move on and see if I want to add it later on. So I'm going to take this entire channel strip that I just dialed in and copy and paste it over to the second overhead. You can do that with option, click and drag on your plugin. You get the little plus sign. So now you can really hear the tom start to pop out since we pulled some mud. That's really loud. I'm going to pull the trimmer to about minus 3 so that when our snare hits it's near minus 12. Might not be perfect, but it'll get us closer. So here's those two without any processing. Here's the processing. That's a great start. I'm going to move on to the kick. So I'm not sure if I want to gate the kick or not yet. I might play around with it and see if I like it. Start with this ratio around three. Fast release. Pull the ratio. Pull the threshold down. There's our kick compression. Let's solo it up. No, we're not doing it. <laughs> so because of the amount of symbol we're getting in there, it's going to start pumping too much if we gate it out. So I'm just not going to. Okay, a little bit of high pass. That was where we lost the fundamental. Back it up. It's good right there. Find some mud. So I noticed when I soloed it, it's this weird hollow sound in here. Try to find it. Probably right there, but that's as close as we're gonna get to kind of a beater sound. 
So I'll widen that a little bit, pull it down. So I don't want to, I don't want to boost too much of the high frequencies because we're going to end up adding in a lot of cymbal. So that's the gist of our close mics right there. So I've got these three routed to drums here. And I'm going to actually make that my drum dry. And then I'm going to make a send for the parallel. Send it at Unity. I like to highlight the channels I want down here and do a control T and that will add tracks up in here. I'm gonna do some quick fader here to get this down to minus 12. Now on our drum parallel, I'm going to start with the compression I usually use, but I might end up changing it because it's pretty aggressive. is without it. I actually like this a lot. I didn't think I would. Here's a cool thing I'm gonna do to add some transient punch to this. I'm going to go to, where is it? Slate Digital. No, sorry, it's Kilohertz Transient Shaper. Just start to push that up a little. A little transient boost and that'll be only on a drum parallel sounds nice i'm going to go back to the close mics and add in fab filter saturn so i've added two bands one at 630 hertz and the other at a little above 5k and i'm going to pull this up to add some tape saturation Not too much up there, start to get more symbols when I do. It's important when you're using FabFilter Saturn across a multi-mic setup like this, that you use the same crossovers every time, even if you're not adding anything. Every time you have a crossover, you're interfering with the phase relationship of the mics, and so you want to try and avoid that. So I'm going to take this same Saturn, copy it over, and I'll start dialing it in. Really aiming to enhance the snare here. Here's without it. Nice. I'm going to copy what I just did over to the next one. With the kick. Great. I have an aux set up here for room, so I'm going to go ahead and control T to add that. Make this drum room, and I'm going to send the overheads to it, not the kick. Drum room. I'll send it at full. And I will start off with Verb Suite Classics. We don't want anything too extreme, so I'm going to go with this realistic drum room. Load that up, see what it sounds like. That's not bad at all. I don't like that pre-delay. I'm going to pull that down.
Ah, oh, no, that won't work because it has like, still has a bit of a delay to it. Try Realistic Room 2. That's better. A little bit of chorus is nice. Playing with the width, since I don't have anything hard panned on here, there's room on the sides for more content. I think I like that right there. Tax at zero, pre-delays at zero, chorus is at 15%, width is at 1.8363. 1.83 decibels. EQ has a slight boost in the lows and the mids, and then a bit of a cut on the highs. Ooh, I actually like it better without the EQ. And instead, I'm going to add my own EQ on the end and use it to clean up the low end. It's important to treat your reverbs because even though, say, I, I high pass all the individual channels of something and then I send them to a reverb, the reverb could be generating or adding some frequencies down there that you're not necessarily going to know about, but they're going to start crowding the low end in your mix. So that's why I like to do that. Here's without the room. That's great. I'm going to send all of these three to a new bus. We're going to call that drum master or MSTR. And then I'm going to control T, make a new track for that. And I'm going to pull down my, my three subgroups here until we're hitting minus 12 in the bus. Great. I'm going to add another virtual mix rack. I love this VCC mix bus here because you can change different mix buses. I'm going to go with the Brit 4K G channel. I'm adding and subtracting gain until I'm hitting around unity on the preamp to get the right amount of saturation from it. I'm going to put an EQ here, a Neve style. And then if I want to do any other shaping to the drums as a whole, I could do it right here. It really depends on your mix and how modern or vintage you're trying to sound with it. For this particular song, I don't want to sound too hi-fi, so I'm not going to add too much on the highs. I might add a little bit to the low end. That's really going to come down to whatever your other instruments and things are doing. But I do like to have it here on this kind of mix in case I want to make changes. I'm going to add the virtual bus compressor gray, which is an SSL compressor style. I make up gain back to zero. The release I'd like around 0.3, attack at 30 milliseconds. That way we're taming some peaks of the kick and the snare. And I'm compressing around half a dB, so I'm gonna add half a dB back. Still peaking overall here, it's not a huge deal, but when I go to mix later, it's gonna eat up my headroom. So now here's with nothing. And here's with all my processing added. It's crazy what you can do with just three mics. If you want to play around with the feel of the drums, you can adjust the pan of these two overheads. You can try to get a little more width out of it if you want or make it more narrow. It's definitely a sweet spot in the middle where you still have your, your snare impacting in the center, but you have some detail happening on the sides too. And that's what I like to aim for. 
Here that is with all the other instruments. Set the floor tom. Another thing you could do if you need more floor tom is come in here. It's a little tedious, but every time the floor tom hits, there's one right here. Just automate that up till the next thing hits. So I'm automating from when the floor tom hits until the kick hits. Just a few dB. And that helps it jump out when you want it to. Thanks so much for watching. That about wraps up my drum mixing tutorial on a three mic drum set. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments. And as always, I'm open if you have any ideas for more content, anything else you'd like to see mixed or stuff like that. I have in the description below all the mics I used on the drums, as well as what preamps they went through in case you're interested in that information. Thanks so much for watching. Please like and subscribe.